so that when the project is completed, we'll have the increased amount of jobs and the increased amount of tax revenue. Uh, the IDA does not actually lend money. Uh, the IDA just merely facilitates the project, and by uh, sponsoring the project, that's the, that gives the applicant the ability to get these benefits. Uh, it participates with the company so that the company can qualify for these benefits, but they're basically benefits in the nature of tax savings. Um, I wanted to basically say that this hearing that we're about to have has nothing to do with any other issue except these three issues, mortgage tax relief, sales tax relief, and pilot agreements. It has nothing to do with the issue of the acquisition of the land. Why not? It, 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 let me finish this. You can ask that question. You can, you can raise that issue. The IDA has no, uh, uh, not involved at all in the, in the acquisition of the land. It has nothing to do with the site plan process. That's another agency that does that. It has nothing to do with the New York State block grant application. That's New York State that does that. The only relevant issue for this hearing, and the issue that the IDA board members are interested in hearing uh, about, relates solely to the financial assistance that the IDA may provide. The issue of the value of the land to be acquired by the company uh, is not within the scope of the IDA's review. The IDA has no input regarding this issue. There's another agency that's dealing with that issue, and the IDA is not involved. Therefore, comments regarding the acquisition of the land have little relevance to the IDA's determination and it would be much more helpful to the board members to hear public comments relating to the issues that the IDA board will consider, which are what benefits would be appropriate uh, and what scope of those benefits would be with this situation in connection with taking action consistent with the IDA purposes. Uh, in order to keep the company in Columbia County for the purpose of providing continuing jobs and economic benefits to the residents of the county. Uh, I'll now turn this back to Bruce. <coughs> I'd like to ask Jim after her to come up and review the uh, proposal. Okay. The proposal again is on the table in the front. If you don't have a copy of the proposal, I suggest you might get it. I don't want to have to read the whole proposal. Uh, do you want to outline it? Um, I am Jim McElroy. I'm a resident and taxpayer in the town of Harbor. I'm one of the six members of the IDA board. We're here tonight to discuss the, the tax incentives that uh, Ted has just talked about. And I want to go into those in a little bit of detail with you tonight. So we can have your input. Your input is important in this process. But before we do that, I want to go through some of the facts of the application. As I know, some of the communications and reporting on this have, have not been of the best, perhaps. And there's some misunderstandings as to what they are. The Columbia County IDA has an application from BMJ Properties and G's Best Realty. Those are real estate holding companies in the Ginsburg uh, business structure, which would own the properties. They would be the ones that would be the taxable entities of this. The properties are, are operated <coughs> in the Ginsburg. But the application comes from these companies. They're seeking tax benefits that are outlined in that sheet that, that I hope you picked up, but I'm going to go through those in a little bit of detail here. The reason the IDA is Considering this application is to encourage the company to develop a new facility in Columbia County and expand the local employment from the current number as reported in the application of 254 full-time employees and seven part-time employees. The intent is to create at least 21 new jobs in phase one. There's three phases proposed in this, this application. And in addition to the, the jobs that would be um, retained and the jobs that would be created with a new expansion, 
there are at least 28 full-time jobs by indirect. Um, these are people that work with Ginsburg's or for Ginsburg's. I think this includes people that ride the truck, people that service the trucks and such. So there's at least 28 other jobs other than Ginsburg's payroll itself. And the construction is estimated to have 49 full-time construction jobs. I think that's roughly a payroll of around $15 million a year. And I think any economic uh, advisor would tell you that a payroll goes through the community about two and a half to three times in its economic benefits. So a $15 million payroll a year is going to provide something in excess of $40 million or so in economic benefit throughout the county. How long is the construction? The construction, then you said the annual fee. The annual is 15 million. The construction is only going to last a year or two, right? The construction as it's been proposed in this would be uh, completed within three years. The phase one would be completed within three years. Is there a guarantee that there are going to be jobs? Hey, hey. We, we, will, we will address the question. There will be an agreement drawn that will have, have language in it, yes, that will fall back language in an agreement that will be drawn. But let me go back here now. The project itself is going to involve up to three phases. The initial phase would involve the purchase of 33 acres of land from the Economic Development Corporation. That is not the IDA, as Ted said. We have no, no uh, involvement in the purchase. If they don't purchase the land, there's no IDA action to be taken. If they do purchase the land under whatever agreement that, that, that they come to with the CDPC, then the IDA application will go forward. The IDA application then would involve three different uh, facilities in the way of tax exemptions. I had outlined those before, but I want to give you details on that. Sales tax and construction materials and equipment. Sales tax, eight and a quarter percent. Roughly, the taxable portion of this would be estimated at around $5 million. So there would be about a $400,000 sales tax uh, exemption issued on the phase one. When it goes to phase two and phase three with additional construction, um, the phase one construction is $12 million, for, uh, by the way, and, and the, the phase two and phase three would be up to an additional $40 million. The mortgage recording tax, and this is uh, uh, payable to the county, it's one and a quarter percent of commercial mortgages. Uh, anybody that's purchased a house and taken out a mortgage knows one of the closing costs is mortgage tax. And one and a quarter percent of $12 million is a pretty big number. It's about $118,000. Uh, we've estimated up to $125,000 here in the sheets is what the mortgage tax exemption would be in phase one. On um, phase two and three, it could be up to another $250,000. The third component of this is the real property um, tax or the pilot. The pilot is uh, uh, short for payment in lieu of taxes. It's a payment that the company would make uh, to the IDA. The IDA would then put the money down to the county, to the town, and to the school district for whatever the uh, pilot is being calls for. There's two components to the application as, as we've received asking for two different pilot uh, considerations. Ginsburg currently operates a facility you're probably familiar with. Um, the facility is, uh, has been assessed for about $3.2 million. Uh, they have an existing <coughs> pilot on that property. That pilot is in this year, 2014, the last year of the pilot payments. They paid this year a little over $92,000 in the pilot payment, um, and the tax, if it had not been a pilot, would actually have been less this year. It would have been $88,000, $88,630. Um, the, um, and, and the reason for that is the actual assessment on the property 
is uh, less than what the human was in the, in the pilot agreement. So the pilot actually can track a higher assessment than what the town assessors have put on the property. The application is to, to extend that pilot on the existing property for an additional five years. That five years would be freezing the payment at what the payment would be this year, $88,650. So no one is going to receive less than what the taxes would have been this year uh, for the next five years on that. That property is all within the town of Clover. It is all within the Hudson City School District. <coughs> the, um, there's some reporting on that uh, earlier after the kind of Hills Board uh, meeting, I believe. Um, incorrectly stated that the tax would be cut in half on that property. That is not the case. The second part of the application is a request for a new pilot on the um, property to be purchased. Again, if this is purchased and they go forward with a construction project in the, in the estimated amount of $12 million. The property is called out for 33 acres. It is partially in the town of Ghent, partially in the town of Clover. It is all within the Connick Hills School District. That property is currently owned by Columbia Economic Development Corporation. It was purchased in 1997 by that corporation for $109,950. It has been exempt from all taxes <coughs> while it's been owned by CEDC. The requested pilot agreement will result in full payment of any fire district tax and any other special tax. That's also true on the, on the uh, existing pilot on the, the property that's in the Hudson City School District. They pay the full fire district tax in addition to the, the agreed pilot program. <coughs> the, uh, the requested pilot for phase one, this is the $12 million construction project, is that no payment would be made to the county, the town, or the school district for the first six years. Beginning in year seven, 50% of the full assessed tax calculation, and this amount will increase by 10% each year. So in year seven, 50%, year eight, 60%, year nine, 70%, and so on. Um, it will reach in year 12, 100% of the, the full uh, assess tax calculation. The pilot is to start uh, no later than when they receive the certificate of occupancy on that, that uh, construction project. The application further requests that the pilot agreement address the subsequent phases, phase two and three, and the possibility that two and three would be combined into one construction phase. And another large addition would be put onto that property. Uh, this is the 33 acres that would be purchased. If that is the case, and they operate in phases two and three, the pilot would be the same. No tax the first six years of, of each phase, and then starting in year seven, 50%, and so on. If they're done in, in and as a combination, phase two and three together, the tax would be approved <coughs> for the first eight years. In year nine, it would start at 50% and would reach 100% in year 14. <coughs> those, are, those are the terms that have been put in the application. The application has been made to the IDA to grant those tax exemptions. We're here tonight to have input from the public on those issues, and that's what we'll be doing in a few minutes. But before that, I'm going to turn it back to Bruce, and uh, we're going to have a presentation, I think, on, on the owners. Before we do that, we're going to have a presentation by Ken Flood on the cost-benefit analysis that the IDA goes through to make a determination uh, on a project that we have. 